Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Crystal Harrison. And 3PAR 20,000 series was just announced, I believe today. Yes. And what, what's the difference between this 20,000 series and the old 10,000 series? Um, well, there's a lot of differences, uh, mainly around hardware. So it's a complete hardware refresh for us. And it's very focused on flash technology. Um, probably the biggest pop that you're going to hear about the new systems are 3.2 million IOPS four petabytes of flash capacity, all within you know just a couple racks. So what are people going to do with 3.2 million IOPS? <laughs> Most people don't need 3.2 million IOPS for an application, right? Yeah, that's, that's probably going to be less than 1% of the world. Uh, realistically, this system is targeted at data center consolidation. So while you might have a handful of apps that need high performance, when you start bringing over hundreds or even thousands of applications, you need an array that can have not just the scale and density, but also be able to handle the performance requirements of bringing over that consolidation of applications. And that's what the 28,000 or the 2800 is designed for. So there's the 2800 and the 2850. What's the difference between the two? Well, the 2850 is an all flash array. So, um, and it has some higher performance statistics or parameters than the 2800. And the 2800 is really designed to be a converged flash array. So you can have still that same four petabytes of flash capacity, but I can also add spinning hard drives to it. So I give our customers the flexibility of choice. It's kind of like tape, right? When you looked at the world today, there's still people buying tape. Everybody said it was going to go away when virtual tape libraries got out there. And it was greatly minimized, but there was still a need for it. And we believe that there's still a need for spinning hard drives. While we think that's going to go down less and less over time, um, we're going to give our customers the flexibility of choice to be able to deploy Flash where it makes the most sense. So Flash is obviously really fast for these read-write operations, but is there is there any potential for a bottleneck in the networking piece of this equation? Absolutely. In fact, you know, if you are driving a Ferrari down a highway, you're going to be able to take that Ferrari as fast as it can go. If you take it down a dirt road, it's going to have to slow down drastically. So it's really important to think about end-to-end -end connectivity when you're looking at Flash. Um, if your network can't handle the 3.2 million IOPS, then your array is going to be bottlenecked by that. So that's a big part of the discussions we're having with customers is what is it that you're doing from a networking perspective to attach to these arrays. And um, many of our customers are really starting to embrace the new 16 gig fabric infrastructure with these flash arrays. Mm -hmm. Then um, the other piece I guess I would ask about is so there's there's this less than one millisecond latency that you guys are, are delivering on. What what uh, how How is that even possible? <laughs> Well, you know, a big part of um, the sub-millisecond latency piece is the SSD technology, right? They're very fast, low latency devices. But more importantly than that, when you look at our arrays, because of our ASIC technology um, that we use, that there are engines within that ASIC and multiple lanes of highway for data movement to make our band, not just our IOPS high, but our bandwidth high, and keep that latency very, very low. In the 20,000 series, we, are, we expect to see customers in the 200 microsecond range on a day-to-day -day basis from a latency perspective. So significantly below the millisecond um, mark. Wow. And so in this data consolidation, or data center consolidation rather, mm -hmm. um, that you're talking about, what kinds of efficiencies, other than obviously taking up less space in the data center, are you getting by implementing one of these 20,000 series? Yeah, so um, obviously footprint is smaller because we use very, very dense drives, or almost four terabyte size SSD drives. Um, so that four petabytes we can fit in right at two racks of capacity, and that's the raw. When you look at that from a data efficiency standpoint, using technologies like DDU application, which we do in line through our ASICs within our arrays, um, we can see these arrays scale up to 12 petabytes of capacity in that two racks. So very, very dense footprint. And so when you look at data centers today, if I'm a customer and I'm redesigning my data center and I have rows and rows and rows of arrays, traditional arrays, and I can consolidate that to two tile, uh, floor tiles, that's a huge benefit for customers, not just from um, the cost of the system, but from the power and the cooling, and the uh, footprint perspective as well. So what are people going to do with all this extra space in their data centers? <laughs> That's a good question. I can't wait to find out, right? <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, Crystal. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time.